The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. Hello and welcome to Kingdom Connection. Thank you for joining us today. It's always an honor and privilege to come into your home. And I believe today's program is really going to bless your life. As you probably know, if you've been following our ministry, January is a big month where we just really turn our attention to fasting and prayer. And we thought what we would do early is get a jump start to prepare you for the fast that will be coming up in January. And we want to aid you. We want to aid you in every way we can, not only with fasting material, but today specifically, you're going to hear about a book that has changed my life and changed my prayer life and significantly impacted this ministry and our church in, uh, in a powerful way. Dr. Mark Rutland is no stranger to the body of Christ, and he is an amazing speaker and preacher and author, best-selling New York Times best-selling author. He's been the university president of, of many universities, and he's on our teaching team here at the church, and he is a profound teacher of the Word. But he taught last year during the 21-day fast on 21 seconds that can change your world. It's his brand new book. It's just being released now. And I ask him to come on this program today because if you will listen intently the next 25 minutes, he's going to talk to you and show you some things. We're in a troubled world. We're in a world of turmoil and fear. And, uh, you know, you just don't know what you, you don't know if you're going to see your family members at the end of the day. We need to know how to pray. We need to know how to put a prayer covering and the security of prayer over our lives and our families. And Dr. Rutland is going to teach you 21 seconds that can change your world. It's an honor to have you today. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. This book uh, and, the, and the teaching in this book, I believe, is a message the body of Christ desperately needs right now. The timing on it is critical. Thank you. I, I feel that same way. In fact, the timing was part of my own journey with the book. I wanted to write this book 10 years ago. I've written five books since I wanted to write this one. Hmm. Uh, this will be my 15th book. I waited 10 years to write this book. Every time I started to put the pen to the paper, I felt God say, not yet, not mm -hmm. yet. Write a journey and not an idea. And uh, this is a 10 year journey for me that has literally changed my life, changed my marriage, changed my ministry. And when I preached at Free Chapel, right. and afterward you seemed so moved, and I you was. came to me and said, you need to write this book. It seemed like that was the moment God said, okay, now. And the book just poured out of me. I'm, I'm very happy with it, Jensen. Well, and, and what I think what is so significant is I, I've been praying the Lord's Prayer. I read a book by a guy named Dr. Larry Lee, uh, oh, yes. I guess 30 years ago. Yeah, it's been that easily, long. and and it's it got me, you know. And he entitled his book "Could You Not Tarry One Hour?" Mm -hmm. And it's good if you can pray an hour, but you're saying 21 seconds. Can, what does that mean? I've prayed the Lord's Prayer as I guess as much as anybody in the world in the last 10 years. Wow. Sometimes as few as five times a day, and sometimes as few as as hundred times a day, hundreds of times a day. And I found that even if you pray it at a moderate pace it takes about 21 seconds to pray the Lord's Prayer. Mm. And it is so economical in its language, so mm. perfectly structured, so, so magnificently ordered, that basically in 21 seconds, you can pray, anyone can pray, everything that they need to pray. The full, the full gamut of prayer is comprehended in 21 seconds. One wow. of the great things is, I can get anybody to pray 21 seconds. Yeah. You know, men especially, let's, let's be honest, men struggle. Uh, we tell men all the time, you should be the priest in your home. Yeah. But most men, I, I can't speak for you, but most of us <laughs> are intimidated by our wives' spirituality. Right. Most women are simply more spiritual than men are. They have a better prayer life. So we say to a guy who works in a, a carpenter shop or a, a, he's a plumber, we say you should be the priest in your home, lead your family in prayer, but the idea of praying aloud and in front of his wife is intimidating. So what I say to him is, you don't have to think of the words. You don't have to be creative. Pray 21 seconds and you can change your whole family. I pray it every morning when I wake up. 
When my eyes open, often I'm in the middle of a prayer when I wake up, actually. Mm. I pray it before I go to sleep at night. I pray it at every meal. You say it verbally? Uh, verbally. Yeah. And my wife and I pray the Lord's Prayer together at meals, even in restaurants. We whisper it, but we pray it softly together, even in restaurant. What a great idea, at, at a meal. At, at every meal, we pray, pray the Lord's Prayer. Because when you pray the Lord's Prayer, you, you, are, you, you mention the, you, the aspect of how it covers every facet of life. There's basically, and you mentioned in your book, six petitions that are in the Lord's Prayer. Let's walk through those, like, and you use them as a prayer outline in a, in a person's life. It's the revelation we have behind what we pray that matters, right? I mean, yes. it's, it's, that's what gives significance to the words. Precisely. The prayer begins and ends with praise, adoration, the announcement of God's glory. Our Father which art in heaven, right. hallowed be thy name. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. That's the beginning and the end. So it begins with the statement of God's reality and it ends with the statement of his foreverness. Mm. So between his ultimate reality and his absolute foreverness, inside that is the comprehensive equipment of prayer that we need. So let's take, for example, the first part. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. This was the first major revelation that I had in praying the prayer. I'd been praying it over and over and over again when I realized that people use two different prepositions depending on how they learned the prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. What do you say, on earth or in earth? I say on earth. On earth because most people do. However, in the King James Bible, it says in earth. Hmm. So I ask myself, what can that mean? If you pray it on earth, it has a sort of a planetary feel to it, a petition for God's will and his kingdom to be established. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. It's a good prayer. It's a great prayer. But what if you pray in earth, as it's written in the King James Bible? It, the, the, 23rd, the, uh, the Lord's Prayer is not the journey to the center of the earth. What does it mean in earth? It's not to mean in the planet. Then it dawned on me, what are we made of? We're made of earth. Wow. So if I pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in Earth. Wow. In the earth which is made. We're made of dirt. We're made of dirt. And therefore, when I say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, I'm actually praying myself in under the kingship and the sovereign protection of God. Mm. Because the only really safe place to be in a dangerous world is in the center of God's will and submitted to his authority. So I'm saying, Lord, be the king of my life and may your will be done in this earthen vessel. Mm. That's the first part. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth or on earth as it is in heaven. Then give us this day our daily bread. I, I, in the book, I deal with a, the connection between the Lord's Prayer and the 23rd Psalm. And this is one of the places where it connects beautifully because David in the 23rd Psalm has a much more extravagant view. He prepares a banquet table before me in the presence of mine enemies. But Jesus says, Lord, take care of me today. So I, I talked with a pastor, and he was, uh, he was kind of critical of the Lord's Prayer. He said, it seems like a poverty prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Hmm. And I said, that's not it. It's a prayer of, of trust. Today, God will take care of me. Everything so I need. What, I mean, daily bread doesn't mean God is doling out breadcrumbs to us. Right. It means today I can trust God. Give right. us this day our daily bread. Then the heart of the prayer. Forgive us our trespasses or sins as we forgive those who trespass against us or sin against us. Or it is written sometimes debts. So here are the three words, debts, sins, trespasses. Mm. The, The heart of the prayer is forgiveness. And we know that because when Jesus taught on the Lord's Prayer, when he got finished, the only part of it he editorialized on was forgiveness. So it's the heart of the whole thing. Mm. So when we consider using the word, let's look at the vocabulary. I don't ever want to get hung up on vocabulary, but if you use the word debt, it means what would I ever pay God back? What, What could I ever pay him for one millisecond of sinful rebellion? What could I pay God? So if he forgives me, then I can forgive those who owe everything to me. I can be forgiving, releasing of the debt. Or let's use sins. If I sin against God and God forgives me, he empowers me to forgive those that against whom, uh, who have sinned against me. But what about the word trespasses? 
a pastor's wife gave me a revelation on this. She told me that she and her husband had been through a marital crisis years and years ago. They'd resolved it, counseling, dealt with it privately. They'd gone through the whole thing. Years later, someone on their board at their church discovered it, dredged it all up. It had all been dealt with. She said all that pain, all that agony brought out over nothing that had happened years and years ago. And she said, that's when forgive us our trespasses, don't know me. She said, Dr. Ellen, what is trespassing? It's somebody walking where they don't belong. Wow. And she said, those wow. people walked on our private pain. My goodness. And she said, I thought, how can I ever forgive them? Mm. She said, then God said to me, you walked where you weren't supposed to walk. Whew. Isn't that wow. powerful? That's so powerful. So however you consider so it, powerful. sins, debts, trespasses, the key to healing is there. Mm. Now, when you take the 23rd Psalm and connect them. Because that's what you do that I have never heard. This was the new mm -hmm. aspect, which I, all of this is new too, but beautiful. But the way that you enter, there's, a, there's an inner uh, coming together, a weaving together, I guess is the word I'm looking for, of, that is so, you can see it when you line it up the way you line it up Thank you. between the Lord's Prayer and the 23rd Psalm, which is so critical in times like these that, so that we invoke the 23rd Psalm and the Lord's Prayer. You know, you talk about a, a prayer. That, uh, if you use the 23rd Psalm as a prayer in this crazy time of terrorism and violence and all this, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. That's the prayer of the 21st century. Right. That is the prayer of the 21st century. Think about how Jesus says it. Deliver us from evil. Mm. There are Do that contrast a little between the, all the way through the 23rd Psalm, the way you did it that night that you preached. The, all right, we'll, we'll walk do us a, through that comparison a, right quick. All right, a little bit quickly. Both of them begin with the statement of God's presence. His, the, if I could phrase, Father. point of phrase, the isness right. of God. The Lord is our Father who is. Mm. They both begin with that God is. David uses that shepherd uh, metaphor. Jesus uses the Father metaphor. Our Father, our shepherd, who is. They both end with forever. I, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Mm. So between the existence of God and the foreverness of God, they both fit together just like the just like the points, the synapse where they touch. So David begins with a kind of a countryfied, you know, he leads me beside the still waters, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. You know, it's, it's kind of from his childhood as a shepherd boy. But then he becomes extravagant. The whole metaphor shifts right in the middle of the poem. It's like he changes his mind about what he's writing about. And he says that he, he sits down at a banquet table and he prepares this banquet for me, and he makes my enemies stand around and watch while I eat. Mm. And then he says, my cup overflows. It's, it's a, a, the, a statement of abundance right. and beauty. So our daily bread and the abundance of God's touching. What about forgiveness? Where is that in the 23rd Psalm? Pastor, I believe if you ask 99 people out of 100, maybe 100 out of 100, what is the key line of the 23rd Psalm They'll say the most famous line, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, mm -hmm. oh, fear no evil, for thou art with me. Right. But I don't believe it's the real heart of the 23rd Psalm. Here's what it is. He restores my soul. Mm. He restores my soul. Praise God. That's the heart. The whole key of the 23rd Psalm is soul restoration. Mm. And David knew something about soul restoration. That's right. He restores my soul. Look at the tense that's used. It's present tense operative. Hmm. In other words, he restored my soul. I once was blind, but now I see. That's past tense. Future tense might be, he would restore me. If anything goes wrong, he'll restore me. But David uses present tense operative. What God is doing in my life all the time hmm. is soul restoration. Hmm. So when I pray forgiveness yeah. for myself and for others, when I touch that petition, and I connect it with soul restoration, that the key to being restored in my soul, body, mind, and spirit, in my whole inner being, the key to inner healing is forgiveness. Mm. So powerful. 
I, I was spending the night in the house of a Methodist pastor and his wife in Alabama, and I had a very strange dream. And when I woke up the next morning, I didn't think too much about it, but I, I just shared the dream with them at breakfast. I was, you know, I said, the strangest dream. And I told them about it. And the wife just put her head over on the kitchen table and began to weep. And the husband got up and put his arm around her and said, it's okay, it's okay. I said, look, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And they said, no. They said, there's no way you would know. This is the eighth anniversary of an attack on her. Mm -hmm. Today, she was attacked eight years ago today. He said, that dream is what we've been waiting on. He said, she can't seem to forgive. Mm -hmm. And when she was able to pray with me, just the Lord's Prayer, we just held hands at the breakfast table mm -hmm. and prayed the Lord's Prayer. Eight years of misery wow. over an attack on her life. It was gone like that. Wow. What a mighty God. The, the whole book, you, you mentioned your journey into the Lord's Prayer. Uh, the significance of it came at a season in your life where you, uh, that, that was so touching the way you shared that. Can you, can you share a little bit of that? Well, it, I mean, it's really the basis of the whole book and of my, more than the book, of my personal journey. I, I was at a very successful time in life, a president of one of America's fastest growing universities. Um, but you know, you know, Jensen, there's a, there's a toxicity to success. Hmm. that is just as lethal as the toxicity of failure. And, and if we don't guard ourselves in times of tremendous blessing, the stress, you know, the, the guy who hits three home runs in a row in a game, mm -hmm. his fourth time at bat, his heart is pounding 250 beats a minute. <laughs> he's, he's on the verge of passing out. It's good. Not because he struck out three times, but because he hit three home runs. Mm. I was stressed. I was, I was literally going under. And I began to, I've struggled some in my life with depression and it really began to hit me and I began to sink. And my marriage was suffering, I was hurting. And I, I couldn't think what to do. I couldn't get hold of anything. I don't know if you've ever been to that place sure. where, where you just, you think I, I don't even know what to pray. And one night, late at night, I was all alone trying to Pray, trying to. How, how long had you been in that kind of state of mind, spirit? I would say um, two or three months. Yeah. It was very dark. I, I just think it's so important that, that people hear that side. Because when they hear a great preacher like you preach and, and you're upbeat and you're, you know, and you're, you have such a powerful, affirming message, and, and yet people need to hear that we all have trials and and We're real. Struggles and... We're real. People are real. Life is real. Marriage is real. It's so good. You know, we, we, you and I preach at Free Chapel. You're looking out at thousands of people. Thousands of people. And every single one of them is facing some kind of an issue. That's it. Every person. And the people that are watching right now. Right now. From all over the world watching this. And, and so you're, you're at that point of just uh, of, of, great, of great struggle. Great stress and darkness. And then, I, you know, Satan makes house calls. Mm. And I, I heard a voice that was so dark and chilling, it, it just about melted my innards. And it said, you don't have a prayer. Mm. Just like that. It was, it was like a You don't a have knife. a prayer. You don't have a prayer. And, I mean, I nearly sank. And almost immediately, mm. I felt the voice of the Lord. It was like he was arguing with Satan. And he said to me, yes, you do. You have a prayer. Praise the God. one I gave you, if you'll Jesus. just use it. My Lord. And in that very moment. So the first, Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. I just began to say the Lord's Prayer. When you can't think of what to pray. My God. When you can't think of what to pray, what makes you think you can improve on what Jesus taught? Come on. Just pray. Just pray what Jesus taught. And there prayed. are people watching this program right now and the enemy I mean, it's like Dr. Rutland has stepped into your house and you've, you've heard that same demonic whisper. You don't have a prayer. Your marriage doesn't have a prayer. That child on drugs, you've prayed so many times, you don't have a prayer. Mm -hmm. And yet you are declaring a, the word of the Lord today that they, yes. they do have a prayer. They have a prayer. They have the prayer the Lord gave them. And it's powerful. 21 seconds 
not just 21 seconds to pray, 21 seconds to change your whole world, yeah. to change everything, to say it over your marriage, say it over your children, and, and, say it over and your life. And the moment that you pray it, what you taught me, is the moment you say it, it changes the whole atmosphere of whatever's going on that day. Whatever, you may be busy in your car, whatever. And you, it's just acknowledging God and invoking those six petitions that you've taught us about. And, 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 you know, the, it's, and, and you can do it over and over and over and over. Over and over. And it's not, it's not vain repetition. No, no. As I some see. would say. No, no, it's not, it's not vain repetition. It, it is repetition, but it isn't, there's no vanity in it because each moment you say it is powerful. But that's why a book like this can change your life because when you read it, you get the, you get the insights, you get the, you know, we would call it the revelation mm. of what you're praying. And when you, the, the most powerful prayer, folks, is when you say back to God what His Word has already said to you. So you're not praying your emotions or your, you know, depression. You're praying, you're invoking thy kingdom. Come restore my soul. And it, those two prayers, if, you, if we would pray those two That's prayers right. daily, continually, oh my goodness, the victories I believe would, that would be released. Absolutely. And think about churches praying them in unison. That's what we're experiencing at Free right. Chapel. Right. Where churches... And on this 21-day fast, oh. Dr. Rutland, as we're going into... Uh, you know, major things that our nation has never faced before, terrorism, and then the election and the critical shape that our nation is in. If ever there was a time when we needed tens of thousands, millions of people praying the Lord's Prayer, that's why I feel like this is a word from God for such a time as this. It's vital, and we got to get it out there, and I feel a mandate to say to you, join us on this 21-day fast, but don't just join us in fasting but get books like this, this 21 seconds that can change your world. And you may say, I'm just not much of a prayer warrior. If you start praying this 21 second prayer, you will be amazed how you will begin to get in a spirit of prayer, right? Yes. yes. Anybody, us, can, anybody can pray 21 seconds. We, we've, got, we've got maybe two minutes, but tell us what happened when you begin to pray the Lord's Prayer, you, you're, in, you're in discouragement and depression and you started, you had a prayer. Yeah, I just began to find that I, it was like coming up out of a, a dark pit or a wall or something that I mm. had handholds. So began, you just started praying it over, over and over and over again. And then after some time, I started adding in the 23rd Psalm. Mm. That's when they began to weave together, as you put it. Right. So beautifully, I felt like it was some, it was Restoring a, your soul. Yes, restoring my soul. Forgiveness, Goodness and mercy are following you. Oh, it, was, it just, just began to flood my life and change everything. Then I began to share it with my wife, and we began together praying it. And, and it's, it, it's such an economical know, what, a, what a great point that, that a person, you know, like so many times I hear these marriage gurus, so to speak, say you need to pray together. You mm. need to pray together. And certainly if, if you've been walking together for a long time and you've known the Lord for a long time, you can do that. But, but a lot of times, it, if you just took the time to reach over and grab the hand of the wife or the husband and say, even if your husband doesn't want to pray, you, he'll, he'll listen while you say the Lord's Prayer. Absolutely. And, and for men, and it, and it men brings don't want to have to think of a prayer. It brings the authority and presence of God Praise into that God. home. Just that 21 seconds. Yes. I love it. And you have got to get this book. And I'm going to let my announcer tell you what you can do to be set up and ready for the 21-day fast, including this amazing book. Start your year off on the right path, seeking God's best in 2016. Join Pastor Jensen Franklin and thousands of people from around the world for our annual 21-day fast beginning January 3rd, 2016. This month, we have prepared two special resources that will encourage you throughout your journey of prayer and fasting and help you pray the Lord's Prayer like never before. With your gift of any amount, we will send you the brand new CD recording by Jensen Franklin praying the Lord's Prayer. This powerful prayer CD will inspire and lead you deeper into God's presence as you fast and pray. And with your best gift of $45 or more, you may request the Lord's Prayer Kit. This kit includes Jensen Franklin's prayer CD, a beautiful display of the Lord's Prayer, Dr. Mark Rutland's new book, 21 Seconds to Change Your World, as well as his inspired teaching on the Lord's Prayer recorded live at Free Chapel. 
Commit the new year to God through prayer and fasting and watch your faith go to the next level as you become devoted to the moment. So when you order that book this week, um, not only you're going to receive this book, but I felt led of the Lord to go into a studio with just our keyboard player, Bill Mason. He's, he's amazing. We've been together for about 15 years. And I am going to walk you through, and we're going to send you a prayer outline, the Lord's Prayer. And together, you can put this in your car, in the CD, or put it on in your home, and walk through a 30-minute, we, we do it for 30 minutes, and you can do the 21-second version that Dr. Rutland taught you, but we do an expanded edition of the Lord's Prayer that, that you will get in the routine, and before you know it, that 30 minutes will be filled with so much prayer. We want to really teach you on this fast how to pray. If you will fast and pray, there's just no telling what God will do in your life and in your family. And Dr. Rutland, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you being here. We're going to come back with another program real soon, so keep watching Kingdom Connection. But uh, I just felt led in our closing moments together. Why don't you lead us in the Lord's Prayer and the 23rd Psalm, any way you want to work that in, or just the Lord's Prayer, however you feel like doing it. we got plenty of time. And, and lead the audience, and let's pray it together as the body of Christ. That's the word. Not just say it. Let's pray it. Yes. Our Father, Father. which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching this program. We'll see you next week right here on Kingdom Connection. At Kingdom Connection, we're excited to launch a brand new way to help the ministry through text to give It's convenient and a fast way to connect your gift support to us. And it's as easy as using your mobile device. To set it up, simply text any amount with the keyword KC to 45888. Hit send and you'll get a link to set up a payment method with your preferred debit or credit card. Don't worry, this won't be charged to your phone bill. And after a few quick steps, giving from your device is as simple as sending a text. For more information on how to set up your text to give today, visit our website at jensenfranklin.org give. Thank you for your generous support of Kingdom Connection. Each gift makes it possible for us to connect people to the message of Jesus, impacting lives here at home as well as around the world. has been brought to you by the friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. For more information on this broadcast or for additional resources, go online at jensenfranklin.org.